Rick has started recording. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and all people around the world, welcome to episode five of November Project, the show, with your host, Boyan. Laura! <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, just them. And that's it. Uh, we have a busy day today. We're going to have some guests um, joining us from all over the world. Mm -hmm. But before we go down that route, I would like to kick things off with a little bit of um, BG. Shall we start a song? I'm going to start. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Laura. Happy birthday to you. Oh, this Where's is your like, birthday? Oh, this is like you bought yourself a cake. No, <laughs> I actually, made myself a cake. No. All right, ready for this? This is not a cake. This is a block of cheese because I live in Vermont. <laughs> and there's a little bit of um frosting funfetti on top of it and then a birthday cake so, so it's not here look here turn off the lights you gotta blow it out oh right 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 all right laura so get close make sure you blow it off on three one two three whoa look at that wow <laughs> you make a wish, you make a wish? Wow. all right well laura happy birthday bg yeah 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 yeah, yeah. even for everybody well, virgin mimosa here. Oh, I wish. Where's Connor with my wine? <laughs> <laughs> so Connor, we thought we could talk about, um, you know, you, Laura, <laughs> your, your birthday. It seems like every year you're turning younger and younger. <laughs> also, um, too. You said on the pre-planning call with Boyan and I, and for our audience out there, we actually do have a pre-planning call, pre-recording. Uh, we're talking about 2016, and I think I think that, was it that year, Boach, that Laura celebrated her third year? year? That was this year. <laughs> that was this year. Where were we, Laura Green? Hong Kong! That was a great, that was a great birthday. Yeah, what did we do in Hong Kong? <laughs> we're still trying to figure that out, but. We were celebrating your birthday. Oh, for my birthday. Come like, on. It was a celebration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went around bar hopping, and I thought you guys were being, like, real antsy. <laughs> <laughs> Boyan kept wanting to get more Red Bull vodkas. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right, and they kept going to different bars. Little did I know they were trying to find the perfect venue. Um, because Connor, actually, I would say the real MVP of this was Ryan Skira of Deuster Film, who flew to Hong Kong with about 50 cutouts of my face that were this that big. were No, look, go back. That were created and built and put together and delivered to Ryan by... Connor Green. That's At the time, right. he was my fiancé. Husband points. We gotta keep plugging these husband yes, points. Yes, husband points. But I mean, come on, can't we give Ryan Skira some Ryan Skira points? I think he still has some in his house. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hysterical. Someone um, actually someone reached out recently and they, they still have a stack. I forget who. It's like a Selmic type. Somebody's got mm -hmm. like 15 or 20 of them left. And you kind of have like a sweeping ock ponytail that like the popsicle stick is in. Anyway, so tell 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 the audience what, what that was all about. What well, happened? I went, so then we went to this bar in like a side alley and me, Goldie, and I think Boyan were at the bar getting drinks and then Brogan went around and handed them all out and convinced all of these international strangers to sing me happy birthday when I came out of the bar, um, which was very funny. And I'm sure that you probably have more details on this because some of them were reluctant. <laughs> <laughs> well. And, in the and so I walk out of the bar and like onto the street where everyone's like drinking in this like alley and everyone starts singing me happy birthday with a, a photo of my face. And I have Goldie in my like left ear going, are you surprised? Is this <laughs> 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 yeah. Pretty endearing and funny. 
And you were, it was kind of like you were frozen with fear a little. There was like a. One of you. And then there was also, there was a detail of that story where in the mix, we're passing out stuff, trying to be sneaky. And we stumbled upon us an, another, I'm not making this up, another Serbian guy named Boyan. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Wait, the you froze, air. Do you froze? Oh, you froze, Laura. The only person who didn't freeze is Boyan. Um, we we ran into another Serbian dude in that exact surprise moment named Boyan. Right, right. They're like, let's not let's not let that detail pass us by. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Boyans are rare, but they only come out for special occasions like Laura's 30th birthday. Yeah, and Boyan lost his mind at that detail. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Also, I know that you're trying to diminish your husband's role then fiance at a time by by sending some of his points over to Ryan Skura. But Connor Green is really good husband because he has let us hijack you for many trips and monumental things in your life, including like obviously your birthday, big monumental birthdays. But weren't you like married? And then you went on a trip with us? Engaged or something. Media? I just went to summit engaged or something. I We got engaged on a Wednesday night. And I left Thursday morning. <laughs> 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 At like 6 a.m. to go to Andrew Ferentz's vacation home. <laughs> <laughs> Kelowna, B.C. For yeah. simple, it was a it was a simple summit gathering. It was, it was a simple, simple summit. summit, and we camped in Andrew's lawn, and went swimming in his pool, and went to a water park. But um, so anyway, and, and those have fun. <laughs> and, and to catch anybody up who's who doesn't know Andrew Ferentz, he's a guy in Edmonton who's friends with Nadim, and yeah. Nadim is the leader of November Project, Edmonton, Canada, right. uh, and, and he used to play hockey in Boston. And in Calgary and other places, and now, and now he's a speed skater wannabe, right? Well, he's grown his hair out, and he's a cyclist. Uh, right. And if you follow him on Instagram, Andrew Ferris, he is like he's like cobbling and hobbling together like some MacGyver workout equipment. Anyway, he's a good follow. So yeah, so that was a simple summit. So you get engaged in that, and then you turn to him and say, "Oh, this has been so beautiful." as you're zipping up your Bailey Works backpack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it went something like that. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, shout yeah. out to Connor Green. We appreciate it. By the way, I love the shirt. It's really, really good. But I, I appreciate that you brought it down a little bit because just regular frame says episode five, happy. <laughs> We're really excited that this is episode five. The thing is, I'm going to wear this shirt a lot, you know? Yeah. Yes. It's pretty sick. I, I think I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna text Dez a picture of it because she um she told me after her episode just she said just text me as much as you can all the time about nothing and I was like I will I will Dez. <laughs> all right. So um what are what are what else now? Are we done with Laura's birthday? It's like running into a Serbian guy named Boyan. Like we got to move on pretty quickly. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna have some guests, uh, but before. Before we get to our guests, um, I would like to bring in uh, what has become a staple at this point, uh, a Laura's five-star review. Laura's five, 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 five. Five-star five. review. Laura. Five. Laura, you have a five-star review. I don't. I, I don't. Come on. Uh, okay, I, I got one. Uh, five star review goes to our uh, longtime follower. We've been at this for, for quite some time. I'm not gonna. I I, I feel like I I should out of respect not use the first name, and I'm just gonna go, Mr. Schwabi, the father <laughs> of Benjamin Schwabi and Emily Schwabi, uh, originally from Milwaukee. Is that where they're from? Born and raised? Oh, we have, yeah. we have our guest trying to jump in early. Um, so our five-star review goes to our longtime listener and follower, Mr. Schwabi, who comments to every single episode. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. You're the best. Five. 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 
And now well, our first well, guest. I, I would love to introduce. I would love to introduce this this character. This is a longtime NP San Diego member coming live from her tiny home uh, in somewhere south Southern California. This is an ultra runner. This is a, uh, a very proud member of this community. Uh, this is our friend Pam. Yay! Hey. <laughs> hey, Pam. Hey, Welcome. Hey. Cheers. Pam, how are you today? What's up? Nothing. Just kind of living the dream through this craziness. It's pretty insane, but you know, yeah, kind of cool so at the we'll same get, time. Yeah, we'll get to some of the like the current stuff now. Um, yeah. Because of what you do for a living, you work on airplanes. You, yes. And you you travel around. So when I say that Pam is a member of NPSD and everywhere, you've been to a lot of cities. How many? What are some of your oh. favorites? What's your favorite? Like, let's hurt some people's feelings here. Let's oh, go. Oh, man. Okay. Let's see. Fav probably my favorite uh, workout was the very first one when I was in Boston right before the Boston Marathon and the book launch, which was super rad. Um, that was probably, sorry. Um, obviously, San Diego is like just amazing, amazing. Chicago was one of the just, Chicago's hilarious. Um, they're so Midwestern. It makes you smile. You know, they're like, oh, hey, let me call you because I wanted to tell you you're cool. Um, New York, everybody has a different vibe. Um, Hong Kong was one of the coolest ones, though. That was insane because you were there and I looked and I'm like, oh, you're in Hong Kong? <laughs> no, totally. And that's, and that's why, if, and I warn you, if you do want to become friends with Pam, um, she is a very supportive friend, but she's also everywhere. So if you're on a vacation, there's a chance she might just be at the cafe there saying hello. Yeah. We overlapped in Hong Kong in such a casual way. It wasn't the trip that Laura was talking about. It was another time I was dropping in on those guys to experience a workout. And you text me as if it was like, as if it was just borrowing a cup of sugar. You were like, yeah, I'll see you at the workout. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you, so talk about your day to day. Like I know you're coming back off a knee injury, knee replacement. Yeah. How, when you're not re in recovery mode and you're not training for something or crewing something, <laughs> how often are you flying? Where do you fly? How long have you been doing this? Okay. Uh, so quick, uh, 22 years I've been flying. Um, did a lot of international, a lot of things have changed. So now I'm flying a lot more domestically. Um, right now it's off the seat of our pants. Like literally, like I was expecting to go somewhere tomorrow. It's gone. So now I'm going to go somewhere else. I just don't know where yet. Um, so literally it's just like, hold on, be a, we call it being palm trees. Um, and, uh, yeah, I gotta be a big old palm tree right now because I have no idea where they're swinging me next. <laughs> so, um, it's, uh, it's weird. It's cool. It's scary. It's all of it wrapped into one, but um, I'm grateful for what I get to do. You know, um, I got to say though, like landing someplace, I've been working all nighter. So I get in like at five in the morning on the East coast and I've been able to jump in on workouts and stuff from different cities at like six 30 in the morning. I basically like medical staff, you go in, you drop everything off, you jump in the shower, you scrub yourself, your hands are raw. Um, and then I go work out and um, then go to bed and wake up and then jump on a flight back. So it's pretty insane, but it's, you know, you just, you just go. <laughs> yeah. And out, outside of, outside of the NP experience, where are some of your favorite places? Where are some of your favorite cities to lay over? Like if they're um, in the NP, great, or, or whatever. Uh, one of my favorite places was New Delhi, India. Back in the day when we used to fly that, that place was like, it was insane, but it was so different. I loved it. Um, it actually taught me how to uh, eat vegetarian and it'd it be good. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so that was cool. Um, Santa Fe is actually one of my, that's probably my spirit city and, and Bali, in, uh, Bali, Indonesia. If you can go to Bali, man, that place is amazing. So yeah. And then my brother, I have a brother that lives in Singapore. So when I get to go out there, it's always kind of rad. So I actually got to go to Chris. I got, uh, I was on a flight, worked the flight. We had a long enough layover. Don't tell anybody. I went to Singapore and then came back on Christmas <laughs> and then worked the trip home. <laughs> Pam, I have a question. Um, yeah. My friend Brogan Graham, he's, he's kind of famous for doing this when he's getting on planes. And I know what he does. It. He's actually trying to, to, to score brownie points. So later on, when he asks for a drink, <laughs> yeah. he just gets a free drink. 
But every time he, he steps on a plane, and by the way, I started doing this as well, is he approaches all the flight attendants or the crew that is greeting everybody getting on an airplane and says, thank you, um, uh -huh. your, your jobs are very underappreciated. Everybody's like me, 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 just asking for things. I just want to thank you for all you do. I appreciate you. And then later on, he like strategically asked for a drink and that drink <laughs> is 99.9% .9 of the time. Calm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that little bit right there goes a long, long way. It's huge. When people bring chocolate, oh yeah, game changer too. I'm not gonna lie. Um, oh, so yeah, someone sorry, comes, that someone comes on the plane bearing chocolate and kind of passes it on to you. Yeah, and just says thank you. Wow, oh, man. that's next yeah. level. That's next yeah, level. That's, that's, level. that's so, preemptive. Because, yeah, thought was put into that and stuff, and that was just that's just sweet. Um, yeah, that's one of the best yeah. things. Or in just just that little gesture is huge for somebody to say, "Hey, thank you for for being here." It's just, but it's any staff. Like now at the grocery store, how long have we gone to the grocery store and never said thank you to the cashiers? You how, how about now, any other uh, things of kindness like that? So when yeah. first time we flew, when my daughter was, I don't know, like three months old or something like that. We expected it. it's going to be just like a flight of nightmares. She's going to be crying the whole time. The pressure changes. She'll be screaming the whole time. So, so we're like, should we get earplugs for everybody that's sitting around us kind of front, back, center, <laughs> just to make sure that we kind of take care of everybody. You hear of other yeah. things that people are just kind of trying to be cognizant of humans that they're sharing the space with. Oh, absolutely. Like it, when people bring coloring books for their kids or, um, yeah, just little, like, oh, do you remember those little, um, yoga army guys? Oh yeah. And, um, oh, yeah. JJ passed it out for, um, the bench thing. Those things, just the fact when we see somebody coming in and being like, oh, wow, they are, um, they're prepped and ready to go versus expecting us to be babysitters. <laughs> <laughs> right. Know? And stuff. No, I was and thinking then, more um, more for like their fellow travelers to kind yeah, of be aware. All right, this is gonna this is gonna suck. I'm here to, <laughs> to make your life easier. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm so like oblivious to that now. You're just kind of like, oh well, the kids screaming, their ears are popping. Let them rip. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 you know. And it's not easy. I think it's easier when they travel with a car seat. I think that that's a big game changer for kids because like in the car seat, they know they have to sit there and stuff like that in a car. Same thing in an airplane, you're moving it, you know, 300 knots or whatever, you're flying. And I, I don't know knots or anything like that. I'll let the pilots take that. But you're flying that fast and they're in the car seat, they understand that's where I need to be. So we really encourage staying in car seats as much as possible. So, you know, but. So right, right now, I think the last one of the three of us between Boy and Laura and I to travel, Laura went to Philadelphia and she was on like, and jump in, Laura, but like pretty much two empty flights, right? Like there was, there was nobody on those planes. Yeah, yeah. they were empty. It was like three or four people. <clears throat> and so, Pam, I don't know what you can talk about and what you can say yeah. with your job, but like, what's it like right now? How empty is it? How spooky is the terminal these days? It's creepy. Creepy is the best way to put it. Like I've been flying to Miami. There's no one there. It's so surreal. It's so surreal. Um, you know, and everybody is doing really well for the most part with the social distancing um, thing and stuff. And um, yeah, so it's just creepy. Like you walk in an airport that's just vibrant and like live and then you go in there and there's like no one there and you're like, okay, yeah, this is weird and stuff. And when we get on a flight and there's, you know, a couple of people, you're like at one point you're like, woo, in flight vacation you know and then you get on and you're like but wait a minute this this isn't what i do this is not in my dna to not not help people out and talk about where they're going so yeah so that oh, was funky and pam i would say that um out of all of my friends through np and otherwise you are probably you're up there as far as like optimistic upbeat generally loving people and so before we kick you off the show because our next guest is coming on pretty soon yeah is there anything you'd like to give to the viewers of np to the travelers out there because oftentimes we're asking people like what is awesome what's the silver lining what's great right now um and so maybe you have to force it but probably not you you <laughs> you, you gotta have something yeah okay so two things so one 
um, hold off on travel for a little bit. Let's get people where they need to be. Let's get people healthy again that, and let the medical and the scientists do what they need to do. And if we need to transport them there or get medical things, I'm so grateful. That rocks my world that I get to be a part of that. Um, but start looking in the future and get those trips prepped and let's, let's go explore. I want to see you on an airplane. You, yeah, I want to see you on there. So that would be that. The other thing is, is I do have a surprise. I know that there's a birthday. And Laura, I got to tell you, um, I, I eat. I, I enjoy food. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I made you a virtual banana, uh, chocolate banana cake. And I don't have candles. So... Um, I brought you a fake candle. So if you close your eyes, make a wish, I'll blow it out at the same time as you. <laughs> I mean, it looks like we're praying to the bread. And so I'm, I'm down for that. Okay, ready? You know, blow my clothes eyes and happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Pam. Thank you so much for, for being with us. Um, uh, you, you you're the best. Stay safe so out there. Enjoy okay. your tiny right, home. You okay. We'll see you around. Bye bye. Bye. And now we have our new oh. guest, Laura Green. Would you like to introduce the gentleman on the line? Sure. I don't really have too much to say. <laughs> we have our buddy G here visiting us from Toulouse, France, uh, originally from South Africa. He is an retired professional rugby player and now he does all sorts of things but i'm gonna just leave me to explain that gee thanks for joining us uh good to have you guys looking so forward to it awesome by the way joyeux anniversaire joyeux anniversaire joyeux anniversaire laura Joyous anniversary! I'm good. I'm good. Still fuming. Still fuming. <laughs> okay. See, I'm gonna start this off. Um, as someone who travels a lot, I'm curious just to hear how you're doing at home. <laughs> And how, like, how your family is adjusting to having you home so much? Um, they're training quite a bit at the moment. You know, they're finding it tough. You know, they find their training very intense, more than <laughs> usual, especially my daughter. <laughs> now, um, honestly, um, yeah, it's an adjustment. Um, but like I've been telling my family as well, it is what it is. Uh, it does not serve any purpose. Uh, spending uh, the whole day uh, looking up what's the new news on the situation. Situation, you know, just got to find a routine. We try to find a routine. I still got to work, still got to adapt, still got to live. And uh, yeah, the kids, we got busy kids. They're South African. They're not normal. Eh? They're just jumping everywhere against the walls. Sometimes they're walking on the hands, twisting their heads. And uh, I don't know if I'm seeing things, but yeah, stuff gets crazy. <laughs> but yeah, otherwise we're good. We are healthy. Healthy. That's the most important. That's great. How old are your kids now? Uh, the oldest one is 15, uh, middle one is 12, another one is six. That's awesome. Busy yeah. times. Hey, so yeah. uh, you are famously very active on social media when it comes down to just keeping people pumped and positive and excited. <laughs> um, how, where, where do you draw the energy right now? <laughs> It comes from inside, brother. It comes from inside. It loads yeah, of it. <laughs> I, I, a lot of times I have, you know, the inside energy, but, but flame has been kind of, you know, um, wilting well, away, if you will. Yeah, well, I think it comes back from years. You know, I faced a lot of challenges in my professional career as a rugby player, as an athlete. You know, I learned to deal with disappointment and tough situations at a very young age. And I realized what it meant to be a team player, to be part of a team, to be part of a community. And that it's not just about myself. My dad once said to me, son, if things are tough, if you think it's tough, just think about this. There's someone that is way worse off than what you are. All right? That is having it way worse. And for me, I've always looked for ways to help people. 
to inspire them because I was fortunate to have a great support support system, people that inspired me. That's why I love NP, love a November project, the whole concept about it, the core values about it. It's about helping those around you, uh, not judging. And uh, that's what I continue to try to do in daily life in various different activities, whether it is a professional coach or whether it's just uh, making people really tired and in making them enjoying it at the same time. But yeah, I think it's about realizing it's not just about you. It's about the bigger picture. It's about helping those around you. If you can manage to at least help one person have a positive effect on them, it will just spread all over. And I feel when I wake up that sense of obligation because I was blessed to have an awesome career as a rugby player. And now it's time to give back. I'm far away from, from South Africa, close to my community where I was born. So now my community is everyone all over the world. <laughs> so I got a question for you. I think uh, athletes, especially the professional level, it even happens to college athletes where someone will say, you know, what, uh, do you miss it? Do you miss the game or do you miss the competition? Um, tell us something that you desperately think about or miss from your rugby days and then something that you definitely do not miss. <laughs> well, definitely what I do miss and is the biggest thing with a lot of athletes or rugby players especially struggle with is the locker room, all right? The locker room is a sacred place. Uh, no matter which sport you're in, where you get to bond with your teammates, uh, where you take the piss out of each other, make fun of each other. Just sometimes you're down, just always constantly having someone to pick you up. And when you stop, all of a sudden, boom, you will learn. And for long, I said to myself, okay, wow, that's tough, that's hard. People don't know what I'm going through. And then I realized I had the opportunity to experience a team environment for 17 years. There are people out there that don't have friends. There are people that are not socially integrated but lack self-esteem. They've been experiencing this their whole life. So I'm like, come on, suck it up. <laughs> Get yourself together and just move on. And, uh, yeah, that's one thing I missed. I missed the locker room. Something that I do not miss <laughs> is the hits. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't suffer too many con uh, concussions. But yeah, you know, life goes on. Um, I've adapted really well. And I think that's why I love November Project. You know, I, my team, I used to motivate my teammates. If we used to do fitness, I used to go as hard as possible. I used to try and out sprint the backline players or the foster players just to make them look bad so they could run faster. And uh, finding that in November project, uh, and that was just great, you know, and that's why I love it. That's why I'm committed to the cause. So how, how are you staying in touch with your MP community in Toulouse? Uh, well, we've got, which is great. We've got a WhatsApp group, so we're constantly staying in touch. We're constantly sending out workouts, little challenges, which is very effective because a lot of them are always present on social media. And uh, we also been sending out the sessions and a lot of them we asked them to send back the videos and we did our first live session uh, this week, which was quite great. Um, we had one of our uh, members actually do his recovery because he's not allowed to cycle. So he laid on his back and had his bicycle on top of him and just kept on cycling. It was his recovery cycle. So people are becoming creative. Uh, but yeah, it's just, we ask all the members uh, everyone just take responsibility with it uh, via social media or via WhatsApp, whatever. Just reach out to someone. Just say, hey, how are you doing? Just checking in. That's all we have to do because we have to stay socially connected because even though we've lost it in NP, it was the hug, the high five. For a lot of people, that was important for them. But it doesn't mean because we no longer have human contact, we cannot have human connection. So we try to spread it up. It's not just the leaders. Everybody needs to step up right now and have a positive effect on everyone. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> talking, yeah. Talk, I, I, can, I can just like sit here and just like. Be, like yeah. Why are we? For the day, I don't know. <laughs> why are we still on? <laughs> 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 so to all our viewers, episode six of the Project of the Show will be featuring your host, G. <laughs> <laughs> well, one, actually, one, uh, so we just had Des Linden on the show a couple episodes yeah. ago, and Des was uh, uh, that professional runner we ran with in Seattle. And, uh, G, I don't know if you remember this, G, Des, and I were on that boat cruise, 
<laughs> and three of us were talking. And uh, Des actually goes to G, you know, like, well, now that you're done with professional sports, like what, like what, what kind of gets you moving every morning? And, and she goes, every morning I look in the mirror and I say, you are fucking awesome. <laughs> 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 and watching you give dead like pep talk about how you talk yourself in the mirror was probably the highlight of my life. <laughs> the, oh, well, that was an ex awesome experience uh, speaking to someone like this as well, being so humble, taking the time to spend with everything that's achieved. I think that for me is the ultimate athlete. No matter what you achieve in life, is to remember where you come from, to have humility. That's very important, you know. It's similar with you guys. You guys have created something unbelievable. You're still humble. A lot of people look up to you in the NP community, and um, and that's important. If you are in a position where you have achieved something great, you have the responsibility to still take the time with others and share your passion, and uh, you know, just treating everyone equally. I, I appreciate you saying that, but obviously someone had to teach you those things and those core values. Who was that person for you that, that you aspire to or that you look up to that, that um, kind of instilled those, those values in, in you? Uh, it will definitely be my dad. Um, growing up, you know, we had a tough upbringing in South Africa um, from the background where we come from, especially my parents. They experienced the, the apartheid era in South Africa, which is up, hey, what's up? <laughs> and, uh, you know, he taught me you need to work. For what you want in life you need to grind you need to work way harder than the rest of everyone and he just the day when i decided i want to become a professional athlete which i was 16 years old i said do you want to go all the way i'm like yeah definitely and he woke me up every morning at 5 30 you go for a run i went for a 3k before school jogging and all I can tell you was I was well fed. I was a well fed kid. All right. So running was not my strong point. <laughs> it still not is. And after school, he would pick up my gear, take me to training. And after training, he would pick me up. Son, you need to run home seven Ks. I did 10 Ks a day. <laughs> I was 16 years old. And he wasn't overly hard on me, but he installed core values in me. You know, you got to care about those around you. You have to look after your community. Um, taking something simple, my dad, for instance, would paint up the whole church and his sole condition would be nobody needs to know about it. That was his condition, free of charge, doing stuff for others. So, and kept on hopping home, never ever forget where you come from. So when I started going through the ranks, playing for national teams and I would go for a run, he said, son, will you run? And the car passes you by, you wave at them, you say hi. <laughs> And it's something simple as stuff he used to teach me. To say hello costs you nothing. To show respect costs you nothing. And yet, yeah, I'm grateful towards him what he's in. And not to say we've, we've clashed. <laughs> it's just any father and son. But yeah, he was my hero growing up. Uh, see the effect he had on people and how people looked up into, to him in the community. And that's what I'm trying to do today. And I'm not trying to fix myself to one place, one city. I'm trying to spread as much passion and positivity all over the world. You're the man. <laughs> <laughs> well, we really, really appreciate your time, my friend. Um, it, it's always great to see you. Hopefully we'll do it soon in person, but um, for now, say hello to your co-leaders and uh, you know, stay sane out there. <laughs> no, definitely. Well, thanks for having me. and. Uh, Keep up with the good work, guys, and to all the other MP leaders all over the world. I actually had a workout with uh, the yoga Steve at Steve Barcelona. So that was quite cool. That was awesome. Uh, so, yeah, all the MP leaders hit me up. If you guys are keen, just, you know, just catch up and have a quick workout via Zoom, please. I'm available. Just send me a message and maybe let's do something with all the leaders getting on board and having fun and suffering at the same time. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm retiring. Jimmy taking over. On that note, right. have a great day, everybody. Bye. 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 Take care, bud.